We're back, 15.1 and 15.1 in the first two workouts of the CrossFit Games Open 2015. The first thing for you to do is to go to games.crossfit.com and read all the instructions, including the filming, equipment, everything that's there, the special tiebreaker rule for the 15.1a. Do not forget to read it. Make sure you action on all of that stuff before we talk about anything else. Okay, now, if you've done that, First piece, you already know this, 9 minute MRAP of 15, 10 and 5 with a toes to bar and then light deadlift and snatch. And then we have the 15.1A which is going to be the in 6 minutes established 100 max straight after. So no pause in between, we're going to go straight into it. There's a lot to consider here. We're going to start off with just talking about the setup a little bit. First of all, obviously you're going to set everything up nice and tight so you minimize the time in transitions. You also want to consider filming, make it easy for you to be successful. Talking about filming, one of the things that you will want to do is to have two cameras if you're retaking this seriously, just in case one runs out of battery, somebody walks into it, you run out of space, anything happens. Two cameras better than one. Now, for the uh, toes to bar in this one, in the 15.1, we want you to set up a low bar so that you don't have to jump up. You're going to lose a lot of efficiency jumping up. It's going to fatigue you and you're going to lose some time. So if you can go on your tiptoes, reach for the bar, that's great. If you need a little hop, that might be okay. Otherwise, stack some plates or some boxes, stand on either side of them and do the toes to bar in between. Okay, that'd be a nice, safe way to do it. For the plate selection, there is this rule where if you have a pound plates, you actually get a little advantage, like a one pound advantage almost on the uh, final load, so if you have kilogram barbell and pound plates that might be the best option but don't worry about it too much. The other thing to think about is that if you're going to go drop and go on the snatch, you want plates that don't bounce and a nice even floor, okay, so you don't have to chase the barbell around. On the shoes, some of you will want to swap the shoes from 15.1 to 15.1a, that's going to be absolutely fine if you want to go for a weightlifting shoe. On the first piece, choose the lightest shoe you can choose. It's going to be all about the toes to bar, so you want to have a light load in there. Okay? If you want to swap, there's going to be a time to swap them. Belt, yes. 15.1a, you want to wear a belt. It's going to be midline, it's going to be toast. You want to wear a belt, wear the best belt you have. You know, it doesn't have to be pretty, it just has to be good. For the grip, uh, gymnastic grips, you saw Rich use them in the um, Open show, yes, you can use them. If you want to, of course, not for the second piece for the clean and jerk, but if you do want to use them, use them. It might avoid you from tearing, especially because you'll probably want to do this at least twice um, this time this year. And then chalk and tape, use lots of it. You can tape the pull-up bar. You can also make sure that there's chalk everywhere, so you have a good, nice, solid grip. You can chalk the barbell beforehand, spoil for the deadlift, and the snatch grips, you know, go crazy, you know? Don't be an addict, though. Now, let's talk next about warming up for this. So, for the warm up, I'm going to start with the row or airdyne piece. Row would look more like the actual movements you're going to do, so it might be a better choice. Five, seven, ten minutes if you need to. Just generally get your heart rate up, get hot and sweaty. A couple short intervals, three to five times, ten seconds hard, thirty seconds recovery. So, you just get that heart rate a little bit more elevated. No fatigue, no lactic acid, it's just to get your system ready. Any movement prep um, on the movement patterns would be good here. Some flow sequences or some animal movement patterns. Again, things like bear crawls, etc. that mimic the actual movements that you're going to do. Make sure you warm up the posterior chain, the old hamstrings and glutes well. That could be something like plate, ground to overhead. So it could be good mornings, banded or with the barbell. Whatever you do, make sure that you're ready to go on the hamstrings, glutes, lower back for the workout. Then, any additional moves that you need to do, we have a mobility video as well that you can find online with some of the prep for the hip flexion, some of the prep on the anterior kind of abdominal wall and fascia, and then some of the uh, forearm and shoulder prep for this workout as well. So go check it out if you need that. Now, after you've done all that, go ahead and warm up for the clean and jerk. Work all the way up to your starting load, which we'll talk about that later on. Maybe you go even a little bit above that. Don't do too much volume in here, maybe five, seven, maybe maximum like nine reps, but not too much volume. You don't want to be fatigued. And then with the last few repetitions on the clean and jerk, um, do, you know, between the last three or four reps, 
Do four toes to bar, three deadlift, two snatch, could it be three, 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 could it be four, 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 five? It doesn't matter. You get to choose low repetitions, do a round of that, take a breather, go and do your clean and jerk. Rest and repeat. Okay, just to get the feel, how it's gonna feel like after doing the 15.1, and also to start to prep those movements for the actual first piece. And then Optimize the layout. When you're doing the warm-up, you're going to find some inefficiencies in your setup. Make sure you lay out the plates in an efficient way so it's quick to load up the barbell once you decide what weights you're going to start off with the 15.1A. So make everything run smoothly. Make sure everything is in the frame. Make sure no one's going to walk in the frame. Take care of those basic details. Okay, You don't want to be that guy in the last rep that something goes horribly wrong. Now, Let's move back here, 15.1, and let's talk a little bit about the uh, tie break rules. So, <clears throat> no, sorry, sorry about the pacing. So, now we're going to see that we have the round times, so per round, and we have total repetition. So, you can choose a little bit where you want to end up in here. So, let's say you want to go one, 180 reps, you know you have to go one round every 90 seconds, and that's going to guide how you break the sets down. As well, we also have a little pacing file that you can find through the website if you go to trainingplan.co. Um, but this is going to be enough for most of you guys to get started on the pacing. Now, when we talk about the movements for the toast bar, you might be tempted to do sets of 15. Now, there are some guys who have done this throughout with sets of 15, which is pretty crazy. But most of you will start to break 8 plus 7 or 5, so even less than 5s very early on, even maybe from first round. So, this is one of those know thyself. Things. You don't want to go to failure because toes to bars will never come back. Okay? And you don't want to fatigue the grip to a point where you can't hold on to the bar on the toes to bar. So you want to make sure that you choose the repetitions that work for you. Maybe it's round one, round two, round three, four, five, and round six looks like this. Maybe this is the round one and you go from there, just two sets of five with short rests. Okay, it's up to you. Deadlift has to be unbroken. Okay, it's so light, you're gonna do the deadlift unbroken. It's gonna be a high hip version as well. If you want to start to prep the clean later on, you're going to start to have a little lower hip. Uh, but for most of you, faster and more efficient to keep the hip high, just know it will cost you a little bit on the 15.1A. And then for the snatch, you have to make a choice, touch and go. If you do touch and go, nice, relaxed, smooth pace, don't try to go fast. If you do drop and go, make sure you chose the plate so the barbell doesn't bounce around. For a lot of you, the drop and go might allow you to rest the forearms a little bit and breathe. Okay? Now, Talking about movements a little bit more on the toes to bar. Normal grip is good. You can use the thumb over if you so choose, or thumb under. Mixed grip or even reverse grip will give you options. Looking up at the bar or looking down at the corner of the room also gives you options. It's going to feel a little different, tax it different muscle groups. So use that to your advantage. <coughs> on, the, um, on the deadlift, uh, hook grip. Mixed grip might be a good option for those of you. If you have very small hands, maybe just mixed grip. Maybe even on the fingertips, keep everything nice and relaxed. Okay, you want to rest your forearm as much as you can. And then on the snatch, use the hook grip. Okay, don't be this guy. On the snatch, I'd like to see you guys do power snatch from the beginning. Muscle snatch is going to be inefficient. There's going to be more pulling, more taxing on the forearms as well. And then for all of these movements, when you do your transitions, one of the things that's going to help you to manage that lactic acid buildup in the forearms is just to shake them off. Okay? Might feel funny, but start doing it from the beginning in every transition to shake off your forearms and make sure that you count yourself into these movements. Don't just be like, okay, I'm going to rest, rest. No, count from five or four, from three, whatever the count is, count yourself back in so you minimize the rest periods in between. Rather do shorter sets in here if you need to, but keep chipping away, keep doing work. Okay? Now, once you finish this piece, hopefully somewhere in here, um, then it's time for the 15.1A. Uh, and on the 15.1A, you're going to probably want to start off with somewhere around 70 to 80% of your one rep max, depending on how well you can handle the forearms in the first piece. If you choose to power clean, you might need to go a little bit lower than on the squat clean, but if you feel like you can't squat clean for some reason, if you can't, you should figure it out. Um, if you can't squat clean, you might go a lower percentage. If you can squat clean, you might go a little higher percentage. 80%, 85 then 90 and then last, well, bam, if you get 90% or more, that'd be great in this workout. But this is something, again, where you want to test it out beforehand and you want to know what your wonder max is. Okay? 
sequence, what I would do when I transition from one piece to the next, first I would load the barbell up to my first starting weight, make sure I change my shoes after that if I'm going to change my shoes, and then I'm going to rest, I want to get my heart rate down, so I might just sit down and rest, okay, and then at around 90 second mark or about 2 minute mark, I'm going to go, but I want to get the heart rate not all the way down, it's not going to do that, but around 115, 120, 125, it's going to be just fine for you to do the first lift. On the first one, make sure your hips come nice and low and they're clean because you've been using that high hip position, so there's no surprises. Choose one thing to focus on, on each one of the lifts, both on the clean and jerk, and be aggressive. That first one is going to feel a little spicy because your forearms are toast and your midline is already toast from here. Now, overall things to remember, breathe. Okay, This should be an aerobic piece, especially in here. You don't want to go too hard in the beginning. Just keep a steady pace, keep the rest periods that you prescribe for yourself. Keep your forearms going, shake them around. Pacing, super important in this piece. Okay, Do not rush. The grip, like we said, shaking off, using the appropriate grips throughout and mixing the grips, changing it around gives you more rest and it's going to be better for you. Make sure also you prepare your forearms here in the warm-up with little voodoo floss, etc. And then efficiency. Keep the bar closed, keep your arms nice and straight. This is one of those pieces where mechanical inefficiency is going to cost you. On the toes to bar, don't use long levers. Knees to chest, little kick. Deadlift, keep the bar nice and close. And then snatch, same thing, keep the bar nice and close, keep the arms straight on the way down. Elbow comes forward so that you don't end up doing this kind of swinging and losing the balance in front of you. Okay, so a lot to talk about here. We might do a second edition on this as we get more feedback from the athletes. But for now, good luck guys.